Hey everybody, Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope you guys are doing well. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting all weekend for the rain to stop so I can get on with some things I need to do on the RV and the bike. And unfortunately, it's that time of year. We're getting nothing but rain out here. I did get one good day when I got back in Illinois and I got to ride out there. But ever since then, it's just been, I mean, I get it. You got to keep the grass green, but um, not much you can do when you're a YouTuber on the road and you have plans to go do stuff outside and your only mode of transportation is a motorcycle and uh, just waiting, waiting, waiting. I wanted to have more better videos ready for you, but um, just nothing I can really do but wait. So my plans to film more and do these activities with ticketed events over in St. Louis, canceled for right now, unfortunately. A lot, a lot out of my control. <clears throat> I can play video games and watch TV though. I will be uploading this video with some connected internet. Check out the video description below. I will cut back in soon, soon, soon. Hey everybody, good morning. It is the next day out here in Illinois and we are still getting rain, which is delayed several of my projects however I got a few things done I'll try to show you later tonight I uh, changed the underglow on trailer swift to make it a complete unit we don't need to run a wire to the RV although the RV doesn't have underglow yet but the trailer does have standalone underglow as well as the motorcycle now and uh, I literally just returned the ladder back into modified auto just finished sealing up my new security cameras See him on the corner right there? Going with a night owl system once again, but just one camera, dome camera, wide angle, 2.8, Sony one inch sensor. Very discreet, just kind of gives me a good view of the side over there, as well as, let me watch my step over here. Step on this guy first, go over here. And then same thing up there. Oh, you know what? The slide's kind of in the way of that one. <laughs> well, it cuts off part of it. Yeah, so we literally got like a two hour break here in East Dalton from the rain and now it's back. And Ryan Hall, y'all, is live in Missouri here for us this weekend because we have another series of tornadic storms rolling through the Midwest. And yes, I do believe Illinois is part of the Midwest. It is definitely part of the new tornado alley that is, seems to have shifted a little bit, but we got the outdoor cameras done. And next we're gonna go inside and we're gonna start working on the interior, DVR, the BNC cable and everything. So we got some good rainy afternoon projects today. Now I'm pretty much gonna show you exactly how easy it is to install a video surveillance system in your RV. I've done this quite a few times. This will be my fourth time. And uh, ironically, I thought about it ahead of time. I've talked to a few friends and I thought, you know, maybe since it's been a decade since the first time I did this, maybe there's new technology. Maybe there's an easier way to do this. Maybe there is, but again, I know how to do it in the easiest way. And I'm pretty much gonna show you exactly what you would need if you're gonna do it similar to mine, except for the install of the cameras themselves, which all you missed was me drilling holes into it and bringing the two wires in and then drilling the cameras to there. So you could find out how to do that. Mine are easy because they're in those two compartments right there for now. And then this is going to sit behind this TV in this com open compartment here above the cab. What's also great is that because I didn't remove this 32 inch TV, I'm going to use it for my security system so that I can see both at the same time. When I want to, I can watch TV on my 55 inch big screen there. So essentially the guts of this is a night owl security system, something that you can find in the electronics section of your local Walmart. About 200 bucks gets you something like this with a hard drive inside and probably four big bullet style cameras. Obviously I'm not using those cameras. I go onto eBay and I get these wide angle 2.8 millimeter dome Sony sensor cameras for about 22 bucks on eBay. And I have a third one on order, which is gonna be an interior camera. More on that later. Right now I just wanna get this hooked up. But the one thing that you have to do that I've learned over the years is that with these Night Owl DVR, or they call them NVR recorders, is that you're gonna to wanna to update the internal hard drive that comes with it. It comes with a mechanical hard drive and over the, the course of traveling and bumps 
and temperature swings from freezing to 120 degrees in this compartment and elevation changes and humidity changes and stuff, the mechanical disc writer is gonna fail and you're gonna have to upgrade. So what you can do right away is just go on to eBay and buy yourself a one terabyte SSD hard drive and install that yourself. You just take out four screws on the back, pop it out, plug in the new one, secure it in there. I have an SSD hard drive in here for this NVR. By the way, this is all I brought with me from my other RV because the new owner didn't want it. All the wires and cameras and everything are still there. So this is all I have. This is my hard drive in there that I've used before with my system, which I can just log in with my phone as soon as I hook this all up. So, and what you didn't see from the end of these two particular cameras is that they are BNC style cameras. Don't ask me what the B, N, and C stand for, but you're gonna have this kind of connector, which almost looks like a TV coax end, and then DC power. So this is an extension cord. One goes into the camera, the other end goes into the back of the DVR. There's where the yellow part goes. And the red part is what I'm changing because in the past I've had eight different little plugs that all plug into all the different cameras. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm learning from my mistakes. So instead we have one DC to AC adapter and then that end plugs into this end, which gives me eight individuals for power, 12 volt, uh, five amp. So one of these will go to the DVR and the other seven are all for cameras, which means depending on where your cameras are at. And for right now, I'm just starting with the two in the corner. And then next week I'll have a third somewhere in, inside is that you just need extension cords because there's a male and a female for power. So this goes to the camera. This, this one runs back to the cord here. It's gonna make things a lot easier, I feel like, right? Less wires, less things plugged into power strips. So let me get everything hooked up with the DVR and then the HDMI cord from the DVR is gonna go into the back of the TV. We'll get this turned on and then we'll go from there. All right, we're all hooked up with the two cameras. I need to reset the uh, date on there right now, but this is the passenger side, right outside my passenger side. And uh, well, we've got two of them. So let me grab my mouse here and go back. I went to pick a view here. Oh, there we go. Okay, so for right now, in that, and there's the passenger side with the slide. But when I'm on the highway and that slides in, this will give you a clear shot of where my line is in case a semi-truck hits me going this way or something. It's just extra protection. Um, I think I will probably just keep it on this view right there most of the time. This is out my, my passenger side, where my door's at and my step. Okay, looks really, really good. And uh, I don't set up zones or anything because I'm a moving vehicle. There'd be no sense to say, oh, I don't want to catch anything here. I only want to set this because it might change when I get to the next campground or place. So I leave all my zones off. It records all the time, but it also highlights all motion on all cameras right now. So, okay. So we're recording locally to the DVR inside. However, there's more to the story than that. And I'm just, I'm going to go over to be fully transparent right now. So if I were to pull up my phone's Night Owl system right now, I would not be able to remotely view what these are right now. There's a couple things you need to do. First of all, basically you have to have internet. So I've got connected internet, but I've got connected internet set up in the farthest end of my RV in the bedroom is where it's at. That's where I have an ethernet port for an ethernet plug. There's a hack though, because I do not want to run a 30 foot, see, a van just went by. I do not want to run 30 feet of HDMI all the way through and go behind the fridge and do that stuff. So here's my cheat. And this is what I've done in many, many years. This is a Wi-Fi booster, a Wi-Fi booster by TP-Link. Netgear also sells them, but this TP-Link one was $19.99 on Amazon with free delivery. So it's a booster, which means I'm not using it for what it's supposed to be used for. I'm using it because on the side of it, it has an HDMI port, which means I can plug this in into the, one of the outlets behind the TV, and then I can program it to grab connecting internet in the back. Then it's rebroadcasting out connecting internet here in the front, but also giving me the dedicated ethernet port, which I need to be able to put Night Owl on the internet. That way I can remotely view everything from my phone anywhere in the country. I could fly out of the country, and as long as the internet's still working here and I have phone service in Europe, I can look live and see what's going on on my phone, as well as if thieves happen to break in the RV, open this up, steal my NVR with my hard drive and everything and walk out of here, 
they're still recorded and saved on the cloud on the internet with their faces and everything. So I'm gonna set this up off camera, but first a couple other things with this system. Well, let's just point out the elephant in the room. Eric, why do you always put security systems on your RV when it seems like nobody else does? You, have you ever seen, besides me, another RVer with cameras on the outside of the RV? Probably not, I'm guessing not, or maybe you don't pay attention, maybe there are a few. Look, it's rare, but things happen things do happen. Most recently in my life, what happened, and I have an update to tell you, my e-bike was stolen from my campsite where I paid in Florida, I believe. Yes, Florida. It was stolen overnight in a matter of less than 30 seconds. They cut a huge chain and took off with my e-bike. I called the cops. The cops said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I said, yeah, but I have video. And their eyes got really big and they said, wait, you have video of the thief? I said, yeah, I've got security cameras on my RV. He goes, we have been trying to catch this e-bike thief for so long. He's stolen 17 e-bikes from this campground. I'm like, holy cow. Yeah, come on in. That was the day where I posted on Instagram. The officer came in and he knew how to work my DVR better than I did. He grabbed the mouse and he was going into all these little individual systems and grabbing stuff. And then he put in his thumb drive into the back of it and said, okay, I'm gonna grab this one, this one, this. He grabbed the files, walked out with his thumb drive. I was like, wow, you, you act like you really know what you were doing there. Well, for the longest time, I didn't hear back from the police department until literally one month ago today. We're talking a year has passed since I was in the Titusville, Florida area. And it was an envelope with a check from the county office, from the county courthouse for $1,100. They did not recover my e-bike, but they recovered many other e-bikes in a storage shed on the actual RV park grounds. Thanks to my video, they identified the Nike stripe on the bottom of his shoe in my video. And they thanked me for that. I don't think usually police departments will write you a check for the amount of what you're stolen, but because I helped them so much with the video and to catch this guy, they were like rewarding me by paying for my e-bike, which was really cool, actually. It was a nice touch. But there's a lot of other reasons why I like having security cameras. Another reason is no matter where you're boondocking at night, I can close all of my blinds everywhere so you can't see in anywhere. And then all of a sudden you start hearing a suspicious noise. Well, instead of flipping on all your lights, opening the curtains and showing yourself in there, I can just press one button, power this on and go, oh, okay, it's somebody taking a piss right outside my RV. Or <laughs> they just fell off their bike right there. It's an easier, more discreet way to kind of see what's going on around you without presenting yourself. Or if someone introduces themselves as, hey, we're police or security, rather than open up your door and it actually being someone trying to rob you, I can look on here and say, okay, there's the police car. That looks like an officer. Okay, it's, it's legit, right? Again, once I get this installed and I've got it back on my phone like I've had in the past, that remote viewing is super helpful. Later this week, when I get the interior camera, I can also put a thermometer right up next to it, which I have done in Babe the Blue Box so that I can monitor the temperature inside that shed remotely. I can do the same thing from here in case I get trapped somewhere or I'm stuck in a long line and I'm worried about the kitties and then you can either come back and turn on the air conditioner or see what happened or even if you have a remote start on your RV, you can start the RV up with AC going here. So it helps to be able to remotely view stuff going on inside and outside your RV. In a movie theater, your little fob is not gonna tell you inside the movie theater that someone has just broken into your RV like they did at Capitol Mall in Olympia, Washington. But my phone is going to tell me, my Apple iWatch is gonna tell me, and then I'm gonna look and see who's going through my compartments in the parking lot currently. It's not like a lot of bad stuff happens to me, but I just feel more protected knowing what's going on rather than guessing and taking risks. I don't like taking risks. Uh, also, on more than one occasion, I have lost my keys in my RVs, and uh, that's very frustrating. The ones that start the RV, the ones that open the side door, the ones that unlock the compartments outside, uh, very frustrating. And like I said, more than one time, I have gone back and reviewed the footage. I watched me one time walk in the RV, literally open the fridge, grab a beer, set the keys down in replacement of the beer and close the fridge. And because I saw what I did, I retraced my steps on here, I was able to find my keys in the fridge. <laughs> yeah. But more importantly, the number one reason, the main reason why I choose to have security cameras recording 24 seven is for my own safety. These cameras, this system that records, it, it records everything, it doesn't matter. Uh, if I break the law, it's gonna capture that as well. If I run into somebody, it's gonna capture that. However, 
this system as a solo traveler, that's my alibi. And that is literally the most convincing alibi that anyone could possibly ask for. If somebody out there accuses me of doing such and such on such and such date, not only do I have 90 days of storage here locally, three months, but I've got it all backed up to the cloud for years. Now, if you accuse me of doing something, whether that's in an accident, which again, I use that in California when someone cut me off on a solid white line and ran into me, or anything else that some random troll accuses me of doing, and then the, let's say the police show up and say, yeah, we heard you did this, 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 and this, and this. I could sit here and go, no, I didn't, no, I didn't, no, I didn't. Or I could just say, that's a lie. Do you want to see what I was doing at that exact time on my camera system? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because that's a lot more convincing than someone anonymously making a false claim about me. It sucks that it has to come to that, but I do travel alone, and I know a lot of people travel alone. And if you haven't caught yourself in one of those situations yet where it's your word against someone else's, it's very convenient and helpful to us to have this as a backup where you can say, help yourself, go right in. Because this can't lie, it can't be changed. It's not like I not like I photoshopped you in there stealing my stuff next to my RV. That, that's literally you stealing my stuff or doing that deed. Anyways, I'm glad to have it. I'm gonna add to it later, but for right now, this is a great start. So, yeah, that's cool. That's a project I've been putting off for a long time and I feel like in a way, it kind of has something to do with the fact that the rain delayed me here in Illinois to make me do it. Um, just, yeah, you know, I just, I don't know. Today's just been a weird day. I gotta, I gotta tell you guys something else going on in my life. My work laptop, my Apple MacBook Pro with a dedicated graphics card for editing has, well, this is what my MacBook looks like right now. And uh, <laughs> if you know Mac, that is the, the look of death. Uh, I've restarted it several times, holding down Control, Option, RP, and I'm still getting this stuff. And uh, sadly, <laughs> I'm not in a financial position right now to go buy a new laptop to edit all my videos. So at the point of filming this outside right now, I'm just kind of hysterically laughing because I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> uh, probably going to have to pull all these files off my GoPro, put them on my iPhone and edit with with iMovie again, like the old days. Ah, uh, brutal. Uh, <laughs> I'm over this rain, guys. I tell you what, I need a dry day. I need a dry day like you wouldn't believe. I am losing it up here. Anyways, I wanted to show you what this looks like outside with the green. I've always been a green guy. Green is my color. It'll be great when I get the RV matching it with underglow. Although I'm not, I don't keep this on out here or at every campground I go to. I just think it looks really, really cool. Really awesome. Yeah, we got the green in here. We got Black Betty all lit up green. <laughs> it is awesome, actually. I love it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, how the camera system turned out. It has got to stop raining in Illinois here at some point though, right? Okay. Um, also, I don't know for sure that my MacBook is really toast. Um, I might be able, I don't know yet. I was, I was thinking it might not be the CPU. It might actually just be the physical screen. And normally there would be an easy way to test that by plugging in an external monitor, but I hope he, <laughs> because these newer MacBooks, they don't have a lot of accessories on the side of them. That's why you need something like this that gives you USB ports and my SD cards for my cameras and an HDMI port to test my theory that if I could run this to the TV, unfortunately, this one has bit the dust and cracked right there. This adapter no longer works and I can't find one in any stores around here. So I had to order one and wait a couple, I think Wednesday or Thursday, it's supposed to be here in East Alton, Illinois, and then I can test that theory to see if my MacBook will actually play with an HDMI going to the TV. And then that would save me having to buy a new laptop right now, which I'm hoping that's that'll work or that it will delay my need to purchase a new laptop in this particular quarter right now of my life. So we'll see how that goes. We'll get back to you in a few days, you guys. We will. Bye-bye.